up a training exercise today in order to make sure that the crew on board are well briefed and familiar with the process of taking a casualty off the boat. It's used in extreme circumstances where the casualty needs help very quickly or where you cannot be reached by lifeboat or the boat's disabled and cannot get back to shore. The Coast Guard have to do routine exercises for their own training and they often use the sail training boats in the area. The most important thing is to make a plan in advance and communicate to the crew what's going to happen. When the helicopter gets close to the boat, there'll be an awful lot of noise, there'll be the downdraft of the helicopter, and it'll be very difficult to communicate. So beforehand, you need to make a plan about what's going to happen, what job everybody's going to have, and whereabouts everybody's going to stand. You also need to establish communication with the helicopter before they get too close so that you can get a plan with them on the radio. The helicopter is in contact on Channel 16, so if you've got a mayday going on at that particular time, then you'll be using Channel 16 exclusively anyway. The downdraft can disturb sails, loose gear on deck, so it's important to have everything on deck stowed. If you've got headsails up, it's usually best to bring the headsails down. And if you've got things like man overboard gear at the back of the boat or Dan boys, then perhaps consider taking them in. The helicopter will usually use the port quarter of the boat, so you need to make sure that that area is free. And they'll usually instruct you to steer either into the wind or close hauled if you're under sail, so that you're making progress to windward. The helmsperson's number one priority is not to get distracted, so they must carry on driving in a straight line. They have to make sure that they've got constant course and speed, and usually they'll have been directed to be driving into the wind. It's much easier for them to actually keep going than it is for them to hover, so they'd rather not sit above you and hover with you stationary. As soon as the helicopter's in position, they'll send the high line line down. The high line is the line between you and the helicopter, and that's what makes this a potentially difficult situation, in that we're having to link a helicopter up above with a boat moving down below. The high line is the way we pull a helicopter crew down onto the boat and guide them to us, or send a casualty back up and you need to think about what you're going to do with that rope to keep it safe from getting snagged. So you might put it in a bucket, you might put it in the well of the cockpit, or perhaps you've got a big open bag that you might put it in. But whatever you need to do, do not tie it onto any part of the boat. They will sometimes earth it first in the water, it might have an extra earthing wire attached to it, and then they'll maneuver it so that it lowers straight into your cockpit and someone can grab the high line. The next thing is for one of the crew members to take hold of that and start to pull it in. You'll have visual contact with the helicopter themselves so you can see their instructions and they'll tell you whether you need to pull it quicker, whether you need to keep more tension on it or give some out. Generally you need to pull quite a lot of tension and make sure there isn't too much slack in the line. too noisy once the helicopter is overhead to really have a conversation. So you need to make sure you've been briefed in advance. You can make hand gestures and you might want to decide on some hand gestures before you start the transfer. They'll signal when they're ready to start lowering the helicopter crew and then you'll start guiding them into the cockpit with one or two people pulling them and helping get them inboard over the guardrails and safely into the cockpit. As soon as the helicopter crew is on board, they might tell you whether you need to change or adjust your course slightly, or they might direct you to keep more tension on the winch line when someone's going up or down. They'll try to communicate a little bit if they have to, but it's quite difficult to. In this particular case, the helicopter sent down two people, 
The first person that came down was a pretend casualty. So once he got into the cockpit, a second person came down to rescue him. Once the first person was down in the cockpit, the second person brings down a harness line with which they can take up a casualty. Sometimes they'll send down a stretcher, but in this case it was a double loop harness. So the first person that came down put the harness line on and the second person that came down who was rescuing them clipped the first person to their harness and took them up with him. It's a brilliant exercise for us because we know that if we ever have to do it for real, it'll be a high stress moment when we've got a badly injured crew member on board or the boat is in grave and imminent danger. So for us to go through it in the comfort of a nice, calm day in Solent, it's absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm.